Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Kirstetter. I'm an Ableton Certified Trainer. And today I want to talk a little bit about one of my favorite ways to make really weird out there abstract sounds, which is the granulator or just granular synthesis in general using the granulator. If you are not familiar with the granulator, it is a free max for live device that is in the M4L Granulator 2 Live Pack. Uh, so if you own the sweet version of live, you already own it, it's free. Check it out, download it if you haven't already. Uh, if you are using a different granular synthesizer than this, uh, a lot of the things that I say about this will be true for other granular synthesizers. They all kind of operate off of a lot of the same similar concepts. So uh, this is what we're going to dive into today. We're going to talk about how it works. It's a little intimidating. It's a little weird at first, but once you get used to it, it's actually really fun and you can make some pretty crazy sounds with it. Before we dive into that, I do want to let you know if you are enjoying the content on the channel, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. It is all greatly appreciated. And you can also check out the Discord and the Patreon, both of which should be linked below. So diving right into it, uh, I'm going to be using a vocal sample that sounds like this. It's too late to say sorry. Too That's going to be our, our sample that we're using. Because if I start playing notes into the granulator, you'll notice that it doesn't do anything. Granular synthesis is a lot like sampling, where you need to actually add a sample in first in order for it to actually work. So we are going to take this sample just drag and drop it in here, and you can see, boom, there is our sample. Now, there are a couple of controls here that are going to be really, really important for understanding the basics of granular synthesis. But essentially, the way this works is that instead of playing the sample all the way from the beginning to the end, like you would, like you hit play and it goes from beginning to end, it's going to jump around randomly. It's basically going to take your sample, divide it into lots of little tiny microscopic slices, and then randomly jump between them. You can control that randomness to make it really chaotic and all over the place, or you can kind of make it a little bit more subtle, in which it sounds kind of like glitchy and sometimes delayed or vocoded. There's lots of stuff you can do with it. So the first control we're going to take a look at is going to be the file position right here. This is going to control which part of the sample that you're hearing. And you can see this little orange bar here moves around with it. So if I play a note, it's now playing this little section basically like a loop. On top of that, uh, because this is basically a sampler, if you play the MIDI note C3, that's going to be the original recorded pitch of that sample. And then as I go up from C3, I'm going to pitch it up before I go down from C3. And you notice because this is not warped, uh, a lot like the regular sampler in live, uh, it's going to speed up or slow down how that's looping because the pitch is changing. So I'm mostly going to be playing C3, which is the original pitch, but you know you can pitch things up or down as you want to. So if I start moving the file position around, I can pick different parts of the sample that I want to focus on. On top of that, we can modulate this with our LFO that we'll see in a little bit to move through our sample to create these kind of trippy, Sorry. different kind of variations on what it is we're hearing. So now that I know the file position chooses which part of the sample I'm going to be hearing, the other important control here is going to be the grain. This is going to control basically the size or the loop or the area that we're going to be focusing on. So if I make this a really small, no, or a larger number here equates to a smaller size, we could turn it basically into an oscillator like we would with a, a sampler turning into a synthesizer. And of course we can move this around. So you could use it to turn it almost into like robot vocoded kind of things if you want to by having a high grain size and then modulating the file position. Or we could turn this down to a smaller grain size. And you hear this a lot in artists like Eprom, G. Jones, um, Little Snake. There's, there's a bunch of artists who use this kind of uh, thing to create interesting vocals by just moving the grain size in a granular synthesizer. It's a fantastic tool. So those two controls allow, allow us to do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to uh, what we're hearing from our sample. Uh, On top of that, we can add spray to this. So spray is going to randomize which grains we're hearing at any given time. And as you turn this number up, it will also allow you to hear grains that are outside of this orange area. So at small amounts, you'll see here it's more random. But if I turn this up, you can hear it's a little more random, and it's also picking some grains that are outside of that. 
make this a little bit smaller. And I was jumping all around through there. And if I turn this up way high, you can see it's now jumping around even more. And of course, bet between these three controls, we can get lots of different kinds of sounds. So if really small, uh, green area, very kind of glitchy and choppy, a larger green area, a lot of fun stuff there. Now, in addition to being able to randomize with a spray, we can also use this LFO right here. It's a really useful LFO. It goes to two places. It goes to the file position as well as the grain. So on file position, I'm going to go ahead and turn spray off for right now so we're not listening to that. Uh, it's going to essentially move the file position back and forth. So let's once again have a smaller grain. And we have LFO right here. Um, we have different shapes we can use for it. And then this is the amount control here. So as I start to turn this up, it's going to start moving the file position up and down. So you can hear it moving back and forth. And of course, if we make this larger, do this over here a little more. And really cool, interesting things you can do with it just by adding a little bit of motion uh, from the LFO to the file position. And we can make this super huge just to hear what it sounds like. We're getting some of those uh, words and phrases in reverse and just going back and forth. So really fun tool there. And then we can also apply this to the grain size. You can hear it speeding it up. And then slowing it down. Let's change this position. Let's try over here. And we can use both at the same time. Let's add some spray to that as well. So it's all about controlling that chaos. It's about getting interesting, weird variations in here and controlling exactly how much you want that to move around and how chaotic you want it to be. On top of that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the spray and the LFO off. So we're left with just this sound. We also have this scan control right here, which has two really important controls built into it as the time control as well as the distance. So when scan is turned on, it's going to keep playing through. It's just going to keep going instead of kind of looping in that one area. Say you are me now. So a little less chaotic there. Uh, and if we change the distance, it's going to be how far it goes. So 100% it's going all the way to the end. But if I turn this down, say you are me now. going to get there and then it's just going to loop. Say you are me, 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 me. Uh, so if I move the file position way over here, again, this is going to move 8% over this way. Sorry. And then just loop there. Whereas 100%, it's going to go all the way to the end. Sorry. Too late to say you are me now. Like that. So you can control how far it goes here. And then the time is going to either play it slower or faster. So if I slow this down, uh, this is actually... Sorry. Too late to say you are me now. This is actually going to play it faster. Too late to say you now. It's going to move through the sample faster. Whereas if this is a higher number, it's going to play it slower. So it's still moving through, doing these little loops, but it's still moving forward. And eventually it'll get to this next phrase. Or it speeds up if you turn it to a lower number there. Between all of these controls, LFO, spray, file position, green, scan controls. A lot of fun stuff you can do with it. Uh, so I'm going to turn the scan off for right now. And then over here, we have basically, this is kind of like a volume envelope, but for each individual grain. So right now, each individual grain is kind of like fading in and fading out as the next one, next one kind of fades in and fades out. But if I start changing these controls, if I say, for example, turn this control up, 
there's going to be basically a little bit of gap in volume between them, which means it's going to sound more choppy. And it sounds... Whereas if I turn this down, they're going to kind of fade into each other and cross over each other a bit. You can also change the shape control here. This makes it more kind of like boxy and square-like. We also have different shapes in here. We have like a kind of saw wave falling. Uh, saw wave rising. As well as noise, which is going to randomize it, which sounds noisy. If you want to go that. I kind of really like just the basic default settings here. I think it sounds pretty good. But up to you. Uh, we also have the option for AM synthesis here. So we can do amplitude modulation. So uh, turn them out here. This tends to be really subtle unless you like really crank up the settings. So this is going to uh, affect the volume of your different uh, greens. You can hear some are quieter than the, uh, some are louder. And we can like play with these settings a bit to See, most of them are quiet here and occasionally we get louder ones. So kind of fun, but it usually doesn't make a huge difference in terms of the sound. So those are our main controls. We also have an option for uh, live audio in, so you can be recording audio directly into the granulator uh, and then use it to granular synthesis on. So you could be playing like an instrument live, you could be playing a saxophone live, record into it, and then start playing it and doing granular processing to your instrument live, which is really cool. Uh, although we're not going to get into that in this video. And we also have basic volume controls, velocity to volume, and as well as polyphony controls here. However, this is not all you're going to get on the granulator. We also have options over here. So we click the view control to switch it from grain to filter. This is where we're going to get a lot of our really kind of like basic synthesizer controls. So we're going to get a volume envelope, a DSR, tactic case, sustain release. So if I turn this up, I'm going to add a volume envelope there. Uh, let me slow some of this down. It's sounding a little crazy. Let's do this. Cool. Uh, basic pitch control. So we have pitch control, fine tuning, keyboard tracking, randomization for tuning. Again, all basic synthesizer stuff. The FM stuff we're going to get into in just a moment. Uh, and then we have two filters over here. Filter A and filter B. As far as I know, and as far as I can tell, they're basically exactly the same. Uh, they have all the same options between the two of them, and you can use both at the same time. So we have our basic filter controls, uh, low pass, high pass, band pass, notch, and EQ. Uh, so if we want to filter this a bit, we can use the low pass filter. Got resonance controls, keyboard tracking, uh, velocity tracking, and then it has an envelope control. So this envelope right here, this ADSR control, can control the filter frequency of either filter A or filter B. So if I turn this up, we get our basic filter controls. So we get filter envelope for either filter frequency of filter A or filter B, or both if we want. We can also use this envelope to control our FM oscillator. So the FM oscillator allows us to add FM synthesis on top of our modular, or not modular, on top of our uh, granular synthesis. So if I turn this up, it's going to be modulating, uh, it's going to receive from a separate oscillator. Which, as you can hear, sounds pretty crazy, pretty fast. It, you know, standard FM stuff, it's going to sound really noisy the more you turn up the amount. But at small amounts, depending on what frequency you're at, you use some like cool weird stuff with it. And then we have an envelope control for the amount of the FM here, which can be controlled here. If you want to get into that, I think the FM tends to be uh, a little tricky to make it sound clean and smooth. So if you're going to be using this, a lot of times it's really helpful to have the filter involved as well. It doesn't get too noisy. But you don't need to use either of those if you don't want to. So 
Uh, that's basically it. That's what granulator can do. And as you can hear, there's a lot of different variety of sounds you can get out of it. Uh, it's very chaotic. It's very unpredictable. Uh, in a lot of cases, it can. You might have one idea of the way you want something to sound, and it might not end up sounding anything like that. Uh, however, it's just really fun once you kind of wrap your head around how you can use the combination of grain, opposition, spray, LFO, and scan to focus on particular phrases or sounds or syllables in whatever sample you're using. As you heard, it sounds really cool with vocals. Bye. It's really great if you combine it with something like a delay. Do something like this. Let's do something like this. Sounds really cool. It's like really easy to make these very abstract, kind of very trippy sounds using things like vocals because it's cool to hear the words kind of move back and forth, especially if you get like the LFO involved and create it like backwards and forwards vocals kind of like weaving with each other. Fantastic tool for things like that. Uh, it can be really fun on just like percussive sounds to so make really interesting glitchy percussion, percussion. The possibilities are really endless. It's really kind of up to you to get creative with like what kind of samples you're going to toss in here and how you start to use all these features together. It's very easy to go too far with it. So a lot of times I have to like turn off specific features to make sure I'm getting the right amount of each feature uh, to make sure my sound doesn't sound just like total mangled garbage, which is definitely one of the issues with using any kind of granular synthesizer. Um, however, once you kind of get, wrap your head around it and get a hold of it, it's really fun. It's a cool way to just get create weird noises, which is what I love to do when I'm making music. So try it out for yourself. Download it. It's free. If you like it, let me know in the comment section below. There is another Max Live grain synthesizer called the Grain Scanner by Amazing Noises. This is another really cool, fantastic tool. Uh, if you understand how granulator works, uh, you should be able to apply that knowledge to the grain scanner. I haven't spent much as much time with this one as I have with granulator, but it allows you to scan through samples. Pretty cool. Uh, worth checking out. Uh, if you guys are into this and want to learn more about it, I will definitely consider making a video about it if there is interest. But for me, granulator is just like a classic, really fun tool to have at your disposal if you're into making weird music. Uh, but that's me with this video. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that and hopefully I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.